this morning, um, uh, Royce King, who is the executive director, president, and CEO of the Litchfield Company, is uh, is with us this morning. And Royce is bringing a little bit different perspective than what uh, Will brought in our first session uh, four weeks ago, I guess five weeks ago now. Because um, Royce is going to talk about the actual history of the company, how 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 the Litchfield Company came about, the uh, I guess some of the milestones that led us to be who we are today, and a lot of pretty significant ones in the recent years with the uh, acquisition and merger of, of some of the companies that you guys are a part of. And so we're we're at a proud place in our history, and a lot of it has to do with Royce. I tell you, I'm I'm reminded. I was thinking about this yesterday. If any of y'all are Masters fans who were watching that, um, you know what what a just a first class. Exhibition of job skill, humility, um, hard work. I mean, this, this boy Scotty Shepherd has won four of the last six tournaments he's entered, and he just wiped out the master field and was able to three putt on the last hole to, to still win by two strokes, three right, strokes, right. whatever it is. And um, but I, you know, the, they talked a lot yesterday about what it takes to become the number one in the world. He became number one in the world last Monday. And it was the shortest amount of time any pro had ever become number one in the world after winning his first tournament. And he won a tournament four weeks ago. His first tournament, then he won three out of the next four, or, or three out of four, and then and now won the Masters as far as there. So um, it's a... It, it, it was just really, really cool, but they talked a lot about during the day about he was making it look so easy about what has gone into him getting to this place. He's only 25. I mean, he got to be number one in 54 days. Tiger took uh, like 500. Right, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of, if you look at it, you go, whoa, what, what are we witnessing here? My point in sharing all this with you is where we are today as a company, as a family, and as a culture has a great deal to do with man that's about to talk to you. And I mean that sincerely. He knows it. He he, he is uh, he walks the talk. Um, he has uh, personified our vision, our mission, our our the, all of the integrity that we try to to use as a as a leader in, in the marketplace we're in and in the industry and it, it shows in who we are today. I mean he's a Vietnam veteran, he's a graduate from the Citadel. Um, he is uh, just a very accomplished gentleman and and uh, you're catching him on his the twilight of his career, correct. But it's <laughs> but he's he's uh, he, he's in the middle of a high note. Yeah. <laughs> we're not sure how long his high note's gonna last. Boys, we just appreciate you being with us, and thank you for all you've done. Well, thank you, Rick. I, appreciate it. I might not just say anything. I might say amen, just, just leave after that uh, beautiful introduction right there. You know, it, it's, it's so cool to hear him talking about the Masters game and what went in, because just you guys taking your time to, to participate, to try to learn something, to be part of something, uh, that, that's a real testament to you. Um, it, it's nothing more exciting than our company here. This company really got its start in the mid '50s, and it was um, different investors over time buying property. Um, one of our major ones was a guy named Foster McKissick, who we just kind of count as the father of our company. But there were a lot of other people involved in it. But in the '50s, we we bought some land and, and we bought some from International Paper, and International Paper had where, if you're familiar with Litchfield by the Sea. They had a beach club for their executives in international paper here. And, and we began to develop our community. Um, and when you think about the 60s, so many of you probably weren't even here in the 60s, but the 60s and the 70s, um, things were good. Um, business was good. Um, we got into all kinds of things besides land developments. We began and bought movie theaters. We owned restaurants and golf courses. And as we develop land, the 5,000 acres of land that we really know here as Litchfield community, which goes from Litchfield by the sea to the reserve marina and over to um, Litchfield Country Club and North Litchfield, Litchfield Beach and South Litchfield. And so we developed this, this acres over time. And what's interesting about it is 
just what Rick's talking about. Um, the community takes on the character and the persona of the individuals that's doing it. Um, we felt like over time, if we can do something here that doesn't screw up the environment and doesn't hurt the community, um, it'll be a success. If we can find a way to improve Litchfield and make it a place where people want to come and see and live, then things will work out for us in the real estate business. And we did. We, we began to move forward and it was a lot of success at the time. Um, we went through the 70s and, and began to develop, and most of you don't remember, but in the mid-70s, there was a gas shortage, and um, times were tough for us. Um, people couldn't get here. One of our um, board of directors was a guy named um, Webster, Billy Webster out of uh, Spartanburg area, Charlotte, Spartanburg, I'm sorry, and uh, Billy owned a gas company. And so we would use a little slogan that if you can get here to buy real estate, we get you home. So we'd fill up the car with gas when they'd come down here to look at real estate and we'd give them gas to get back up to Spartanburg. So it, it was a, a time of, of getting through some tough times there. Um, we were all development at that time. Um, we went into the late um, 70s in, in good shape. Business was great, 79, 80. But in 81, most of you know, we had an economic downturn. Um, it was the first time in the history of America. We, we didn't know you could have inflation and recession at the same time. It, it was thought that those two things couldn't exist, but they did. And um, we saw some terrible real estate years, um, just could not give real estate away. 17, 18, 19, I read something um, Bill Miller wrote about the history of the company said 21% was the lending rate to try to buy a condominium from us at that time. So you can imagine we would have had a tough time surviving, but we did. And we continued to come out of that in um, 83, 84, 85, 86. Um, and please, Litchfield by the Sea originally was designed to be all multifamily, all kind of mediums. And in 86, the tax law changed. And basically, from an accounting standpoint, it allowed investors not to be able to accelerate depreciation. I don't want to get too complicated, in it, but it allowed, we were up. Up until that time, you could buy a piece of real estate, write it off, and it basically paid for itself after taxes. So it was a boom for you if you wanted to own investment property real estate. Well, that all changed. Overnight, stroke of a pen, that market went away. So we woke up in 87 with no condominium market. And here we are designed to build condominiums. And our development comes to a, a little halt at that time. And, you know, um, like anything, you change as you see things change today. But we um, got into a different kind of business. We began to sell land. We developed what is known as Charlestown Grant, which was originally going to be kind of many, but it's single family home sites. And so we adapted with the time and really began to be successful again. In 1989, um, our leader and mentor, uh, Foster McKissick, uh, was killed in a plane crash off of Georgetown. And that was a tough time for us. Um, coming out of that time was rough. Um, we lost a lot of cash during the first recession of high interest rates. We lost a lot of cash when the tax law changed. And now our benefactor was not here. So in 1992, we filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That bankruptcy allows you to work out of your troubles versus chapter seven, which is a liquidation bankruptcy. Chapter 11 is one to allow us to work out. And we did. We had about $110 million in debt, and but we did have assets. And the one, interesting enough, the one bank we owed 10 million to, not the ones we owed 100 million to, forced us into bankruptcy. They called their loan. And it's just a little tidbit of information. Uh, I won't tell you which bank it was because we don't do business with them anymore, as you can imagine. Um, but it, it was a, a really a time for us, and we began to do things like um, sell off our assets. We sold off the movie theaters. We sold off our restaurants. We sold off our um, rental program and our um, two golf courses um, next door to us, what we call a resort area over here in our hotel. We sold Litchfield Country Club, Wilbrook Country Club, and, and River Club. And we sold those three golf courses, movie theaters, and the rental business we sold. 
and we sold that rental business to a company called Myrtle Beach National. And that they come back into the story later. And, and we were able, in a short period of time, pay off $110 million in debt. It was a real miraculous move. A gentleman named Doug Richardson was the, the, the man that was behind the scene doing it all. He was our lead at that time. And he, he did a fantastic job uh, getting us out of debt. And we were sitting here with Oceanfront Real Estate, um, the rest of Reserve, a uh, lot of land to develop. So we, we were land rich and we had no debt. So as the business began to come back in the mid 90s, we excelled. Uh, we began to build oceanfront condominiums. Y'all know them, Hamilton, Fordham, and, and the oceanfront um, condos. And it was really a, a great time for us. That's when I showed up in 94, figured I'd take advantage of a good real estate market and, and come here. And it, it was really a time of us to build our company back up again. And so we began to proceed. And you know, interesting enough, Rick hit the nail on the head. If, if you can find a way to um, help the people and the people in your company, the people in your community. Uh, the company itself is the people in it. And, and as we began to develop that mindset and come forward, we really were successful all through the uh, 90s. And uh, coming into 1999, I think we finished our last, last uh, golf course uh, reserve in 1998, 99. And then we began to figure out what we were going to do with the balance of the land. We began to sell off all the reserve lots. And as you know, come around uh, 2004 or five, we were basically out of the land business ourselves. Um, so we were, had a charge from that bankruptcy court. It said once you pay off your debt and you get out of business, you had to shut down your corporation. So our stockholders in 2005 um, knew that they had, they had already sold off all the assets, so they were going to have to go cut, shut down the company. And they sold off the management company. We know it as Walkmo Management. They had already sold the golf courses, and they sold the real estate business. Um, I was fortunate enough to have the option to buy it, and a, a group of people bought that business and closed it in 2006. Um, January 2006, it changed hands. A company had been in the same hands for 60 years, uh, changed hands for the first time. And sure enough, we bought it at a perfect time when 07, the market goes to hell in a hat basket. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're sitting here with a development company and no developer sales. It wasn't just at the end of 07. It had to be 08, 09. 10, 11, or 12. So we had to make a decision at that time about just what business we would be in. So we, being a general brokers company, was not something that we were looking forward to. But we, we knew that's where we had to go to make a living. We had to move over and get into the general brokers business. And hence, that's where I am and where you guys are. And it's, it's just been such a, a marvelous success story for us. Um, and all of that is, as we grew, uh, you think about in 08, 09, um, things being so tough for us in those points of time, around 15, 2015, we merged back with Myrtle Beach National. We, in other words, we bought back our rental business. Uh, we merged back and, and got into the short-term and long-term rental business at the hotel, and that was real plus for us. Uh, all that while, we were able to grow in company. You, you've got Orangeburg, we got Manning, we got um, Charleston, we got uh, Somerville, and, and just a, a beautiful array in Georgetown and the Lashicot Company. And what you see is just the growth of the people that's in the company itself. Um, that is the key, and Rick's going to hit on it, is that we were able to do some things here um, that I think are the real essence of our success. And it really has been, if, if, again, if you can find a way to help the people and help them in life and be successful. And I'm not talking about success in the real estate profession. Certainly, we want you to be successful uh, real estate-wise, but just in life itself, the marriages, the raising the kids, all, everything you have to do here. That's where we want to hang our hats. How do we do that? Now, we want to be successful in real estate sales. You guys are in this class here today because if we're going to be in the business, we want to be good at it. And, and I, I couldn't be prouder of, of every single solitary one 
um, you know, who you are is um, what people think about you. It's not what you wear. It's not the building here. They are, we're known by the people in the company. And each one of you guys carry that torch. And I, I couldn't be proud of each one of you. So that's kind of how we got here today. And um, we're looking forward to it. As you know, um, growth comes in people. It's not in real estate sales. Uh, real estate sales are byproduct of people that you have. Uh, so we're so fortunate to grow in the people. And you see around this room, Rick being one, just a new guy. How long have you been here, Rick? Uh, 17, 17 years. years that's it. So, uh, uh, thank you for being here, and, and I can't tell you how much we're, we're looking forward to getting to know each one of you better. But thank you. Of course, let me ask you a question. It is, if this is my memory serves me correct, when the Litchfield Company came out of bankruptcy, uh, were we the first?